Hi everybody, this is Erin Lincoln. I'm back today to teach you a cool technique about making puffed fabric accents. The idea came to me because ah, a long time ago there was a company called Patchwork Paper and they made these great scrapbook pages where they stuff polyfill behind paper piecings and they were puffed. It looked like a quilt. And so that's what I'm doing here and you can kind of see it with the star there. It's all about what you put behind and it's a super simple technique and you probably have the stuff at home. All right, so if you can look at my star, you can see how it's kind of raised up off the surface of my card. It was kind of hard to see in the photos. So we're gonna do that. It's gonna take us a little bit to get there. We have a lot of die cutting to do. We are gonna die cut first the mat Mega Matte Stack 3 with Blueberry Sky ink. And we're going to go ahead and pull out seeing stars. This is the medium sized star, I believe. I'm lining it up to the corners of the mat stack, mega mat stack, just to make sure it's straight. So I'm die cutting a die cut. You probably do it all the time. Got it from Give Me. I'm very, very pregnant, and sometimes I get out of breath. So if you hear me breathing, <laughs> it's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it in the end, I promise. All right, at the bottom of my card had a little piece from Harvest Gold out of the mat stack, and I don't need the whole die cut, so I'm just die cutting the edge of it. Great way to save some paper. And here we're gonna come up on the super secret piece here. So I use the medium star, now I'm gonna use the small star. This really works great with any of our die cuts that are nested. Um, we have hearts, flowers, and um, real quick, I'm doing this out of fun foam, which you probably have. The matte stacks and the matte stack layers, this technique would work great on. And I'm die cutting this twice because we're going to stack them. We really want some height. Beautiful blooms. I think there's three sets of nested flowers so those would work well for this technique as well anything too intricate I think you might run into trouble so keep it basic all right we're gonna put those aside right, time to get some stamping done we do stamp right with all these die cuts and everything all right we're using summer sunrise ink on harvest gold paper using background basic gingham great for this homespun look nice thick strips and I use this all the time you know I have a hard time lining them up I'll admit but for uh, strips like this this is great somebody posted a really great tutorial online in the forums about how to line background stamps like this app maybe I'll look that up and discuss it on a Friday when I'm moderating she did a brilliant job need a gridded block for that Okay, and we're going to get out stitches and swirls. And we're using Enchanted Evening Ink. And I'm just using one stamp. All the stamps could be used from this set to kind of make it, you know, different, interesting. But I'm really finding if you just turn it and twist one of these stamps around, you know, no one really knows you're using the same stamp three times. And we're going in a visual triangle with a stamp, so lower right hand, middle left, upper right hand is where we're going with it. And it's nice and balanced. Making sure it overlaps both the center die cut, the star, and off the edge. And we're going to bust out some white pencil here. I posted a card on my blog maybe a month ago. And this is actually the card I did beforehand. And it's how I got the idea. So if you see, there's white pencil. And it's in two shades. So for the darker shade, we are going to sharpen it up. I find this works best to have a nice sharp pencil. And I'm going to color the middles of the flowers, the leaves, and where the flower petals overlap, there's like a little detail piece right there. 
I'm pressing really hard. Doing the leaves. And what's nice is by the time my pencil kind of wears down at the tip, I'm ready to do the soft look, the, the lighter color white. I think I'm actually going to go to the art store and buy like five white pencils and keep them on my desk, out of my pencil tin, because I'm, I keep busting my pencil tin and this pencil is going to, it's not going to exist here very shortly because I'm going to be using it so much. So I really like the look of white pencil on colored cardstock. And they sell pencils individually, so I'm going to go get a bunch. Okay, now we're going to do the softer white. I learned a long time ago, I think it might have been Jennifer McGuire years and years ago, we've both been doing this forever, that if you go in a circular motion with the colored pencil, you don't see the lines as much. And it gives it a softer look, and that's what I'm doing here for the lighter color white. accenting those middles a little darker and I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera because you don't need to see me color the whole thing but you, it gives you an idea so go get some white colored pencils this, I mean such a pretty look okay we have some fabric this is I think a lakeshore design I'm not a fabric person I just go and buy what's pretty I'm using my original dye the medium star to kind of trim it to, um, to make sure it's big enough for the to cover the whole window. I don't want to see anything behind. And I'm just going to flip my die cut over and adhere that fabric to the back of the die cut. I'm trying to get the adhesive as close to the edge as possible because I want this fabric to be tight to the edge. And laying our fabric over it. There you go. Okay, and now here's all the magic of this technique. You take this fo foam die cuts that you have, you glue them together with some glue stick or whatever you have handy. Now the reason I'm using two is because I want the extra puffiness or height that two stacked gives instead of one. If you have thin foam, fun foam, you might want to think about three. Or if you have thicker fun foam, maybe you can get away with one. Now I'm turning my die cut to the light so I can make sure I have this die cut stack lined up in that window and you would just adhere it to the middle. Now use some score tape or double-sided tape. Whatever you have that would kind of work in the same way. And you adhere that tape right up to the edge of the open window, the larger star. And again, you see I'm turning it towards the light, which is my window to my left, to make sure I get it to the edge. And the other important thing to notice is I'm overlapping my tape onto the paper because it's easier to pull up. If it's just adhered to the fabric, it's a pain to, it's gonna come off, it's not gonna stick. Eh. Why bother? Just go to the edge, get some paper, and that way you have it sticky to the paper. And just go all the way around. Now you notice I have tape all the way around every single angle. We're gonna make this thing stick to our card front. This thing's not going anywhere. But there's a reason why we're doing this. It's to help the star middle puff up if it's adhered as closely as possible to where it's raised. You see I'm having a little bit of trouble because I don't have that tape on the cardstock. So I moved it and it got a little easier for me. So that's a little tip I learned probably the hard way. Okay, here's our cardstock base, Enchanted Evening. Making sure we have all our tape. Adhesive. Could use the proper terms, right? 
and we're going to stick it to our card front. And we're going to press down right up to that edge. And that's really going to help the center of the fabric and the fun foam underneath puff up and give some dimension. You can kind of see it. It looks kind of like a quilt. You know how, you know, frayed old quilts kind of are puffy because they've been washed so many times. All right, we're using the bottom, the little harvest gold. Now, if you notice, I'm extending it to make it longer. We're just going to adhere this. And now all we have to do is wrap up some of the final details on this card. Okay, to kind of carry over that white look from the colored pencils, we're going to rub Fresh Snow ink along the edges. And then I'm going to use a highly sophisticated technique here to soften that. It's called my finger. Just rubbing it dry, rubbing it in softening, you know, just like, you know, when you do your blush or your eyeshadow, same type of deal. I am not one to be giving makeup advice, so this is quite comical. Okay, now we're going to get a sentiment strip, just a white strip. Now I was going to die cut a new red pinked border, but luckily with this die, when you die cut one, you get two, <laughs> so I had it existing, so we're just going to use what I had doesn't have to be straight because you're going to line it up from the front. Totally a must have die. I use this one all the time. And then we're just going to stamp our sentiment, Happy Fourth of July, from the stamp set established 1776 in the middle in Enchanted Evening. And we're going to adhere and trim. And this way, you know, in case you can make a mistake, you can do it over again. You can make sure it's centered. And then just trim the edges. Okay, now we just need a couple little embellishments. It looks great, but it needs a little 3D something. So I have some buttons, and I have this die. I use this die all the time. It's from AdSense. It's like this little circular starburst. Perfect for going behind buttons. You know, so I'm adhering the score tape to the cardstock, and then adhering that to the fabric. Much easier way to do it. And an enchanted evening button right on top. And then I have some pure, um, excuse me, I have some blueberry sky buttons with red floss just to give a little bit of a different look. Work in that red. And they're going above and below. And that completes our card. Okay, I hope you can see, here's both cards, the puffed accent in the middle and how it comes up off the surface of the card. It's very festive for this time of year, very patriotic, and it can be used for whatever type of card you have in mind to make. Just keep in mind it works best with the nested dies. If you want to use something like fillable frames, go ahead and die cut the foam, the fun foam, but then trim around it so you can have a nice fit in the die cut negative that it's sticking through, if that makes any sense. Okay, thanks for joining me. If you got any questions, certainly let me know. And I hope you have a wonderful summer. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.